Acute Angle Trigonometry. Today we're going to do the cosine law and we're going to prove the cosine law by using two properties that you're familiar with. One which is the Pythagorean theorem and secondly the cosine ratio for primary trigonometric ratios. So the first thing we did was we have our acute triangle ACB or ABC whatever you want to say. We've dropped it perpendicular just like we did in the sine law and we made uh, this point here called D. We've labeled the sides opposite the vertices and in order to accommodate these two new parts of a triangle, so we've got two sections here, we've called this length from A to D X and this length from D to B C minus X. For instance, if I knew C was 5 and X was 2, then you'd say this length is 5 minus 2 or 3. Okay, so in triangle ACD, we have B squared, so this is Pythagorean theorem. B squared equals X squared plus H squared. So the square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And the cos of A, that would be this angle right here, the cos of angle A would be adjacent over the hypotenuse, which in this case is B. Don't write H, H is the height. I started doing that and I recognized my mistake very quickly. So that means that X is going to be B times the cos of A. Okay, now we're going to go to the second triangle, so triangle CDB. So in triangle CDB, if we do the um, Pythagorean theorem part of this first, we're going to say that A squared is equal to H squared plus C minus X squared. So this length here, C minus X. Now remember, when you square a binomial, you do squared twice the product, so that's minus 2CX, and you square the X, so plus X squared. Now if we look at this and take a look back to this, we can find a few things that we can substitute in. The first is that we have an H squared plus an X squared, and that would be B squared. So we're going to replace that by b squared. So that's going to give us b squared plus c squared minus 2cx. Now we're going to do a second substitution for x because we also know that x is equal to b times the cos of a. So we're going to replace that we're going to have b squared plus c squared minus 2c and now we're going to plug in the b cos a. b cos a. I forgot the s on that. Okay, so now you can see what we have. We can fix this formula up so that it's nice and neat. So we're going to say a squared equals b squared plus c squared. That looks very familiar to you, doesn't it? It's Pythagorean theorem. Minus 2, let's put it in order, like B then C, times the cos of A. And there you go, that's the cosine law. Now you could do this for any other um, side length as well. I could say what's B squared? So B squared is going to be the sum of the other two sides. Now you should be looking for a pattern here. So you see how I have a squared, c squared, 2ac, and this a squared and the cos of a. So if this is b squared, this one down here has to be the cos of b. So that's what you want to be looking for when you're, when you're writing up your formula, that you have the side length and the cos of that, that angle that matches. And the last one is going to be c squared. So you can have any combination. All you have to do is if you have c squared here, then out here you have to have the cos of c and the other two just go in here. So we have b and c. Some students have trouble trying to decide, you know, well, how do I adjust this if it's not a, b's and c's? Well, we'll look at that as we go through some of the other examples where we have pqr and rst and lmn. Whoops. 
Okay, so let's move ahead and look at when to use the cosine law. Okay, so you use the cosine law if you don't have a right angled triangle. I guess I could have drawn a right angled triangle here. Should be looking like that, right? That's a little better one. Oop. You can't use the sine law. So now remember from yesterday's lesson, to find the sine law, you have to be able to make that double X pattern, right? Or the two, two crosses like that. And you have two sides and a contained angle, or you have three side lengths. So what does two sides and a contained angle look like? Well, that looks like this question right here. So you see I have this side, this side, and a contained angle. Contained means it's in between those two side lengths. So here's my contained angle. Now, how you use this is if you want to find, um, if I have this angle and these two sides, then I can find this side length because I have this angle. And remember, looking at these equations here, you have the side and you have the angle. Side, angle that matches it. So in this question, I would be able to solve for side length Q. So I'm going to write out the cosine law, or the Coles law, as my students like to call it. The Coles law. Do you like Coles law? So I'm going to use Q because I have angle Q. So out here I'm going to have the cos of 77 degrees, right? That's my angle Q. So Q squared is going to be equal to what are the other two sides? So this side here is P. I'm going to write it under here because I'm afraid I might run out of room. And this is going to be R. So Q squared is going to be R squared plus P squared minus 2RP, cos of Q. And now I just plug in the side lengths. So R is 4, P is 3, so 2 times 4 times 3 times the cos of 77 degrees. And now all you have to do is the math for this. So 16 and 9, that's going to be 25 minus, that's 12, 2 is 24, cos 77 degrees. Now I'm going to tell you what the most common mistake is right now. I have seen many a student do 24 minus, or 25 minus 24 is 1. You cannot subtract these two numbers because this is 24 times the cos of 77 degrees. Okay, so don't make that mistake. If you do this properly in your calculator, you shouldn't have that issue anyway. So let's plug in what we have here. We have 25 minus 24 times the cos of 77 degrees, and that's going to give me 19.6. And remember, that is Q squared. So you might say, oh, 19.6, that's really long. If this is 3 and that's 4, that doesn't quite make sense. Remember, this is Q squared. So Q squared is 19.6 and we'll say 0, 1. Uh, let's write it all out just for fun. And so Q is going to be approximately equal to the square root of that. Now remember, when you have this in your calculator, you don't have to rewrite it. Your calculator is really smart. So if I do I ask it for the square root of the answer, it plugs in all those decimals for me and that's the best way to do it to keep your accuracy. So I get 4.427. So to one decimal place would be 4.4 centimeters. Okay, so now I've, I've, um, I've solved for this side length. So if you were asked to solve the triangle, you would now have the three sides and one angle. And once you have that, once I have this, I'm going to write it in, in pink so you know that we added this later. So if I have Q is equal to 4.4, and now I want to solve the rest of the triangle, I could find one of these angles. Take your pick. So let's solve for R. So I would be able to use the sine law now. So you only ever need to use the cosine law once in a question to solve a triangle. Because once you have that, I can find angle R. See, there's my X pattern. So 
I didn't leave myself much room to do this question, but I'll, I'll do this one here. So I do the sine of r over r, which is 4, equals the sine of 77 degrees over 4.4. And now you can see you can get that angle. So sine r is going to be equal to 4 times the sine of 77 degrees. Are you doing the end thing? I hope so. So I do sine r is 4 times this divided by that, divided by 4.4. And we'll try to make room for that here on, on this. So I got 4 times the sine of 77 degrees divided by 4.4. Remember, that's going to give me a ratio. Now, don't if, if you got to here and you stopped, you know that's not an angle. Right? We're trying to find an angle. So I'm going to do second sine of the answer equals, and I get 62, about 62.3 degrees. So angle R is approximately 62.3 degrees. So once you have that angle, this one here now, I have 62.3 and you could figure out the third one, angle P. And then you've solved the triangle, you found all the side lengths and all the angles. Okay, so the second reason you need the cosine law is when you have something like this question here. So I have L, M, N, and I have three side lengths, but I don't have any angles. So how am I going to find the angles? Okay, so we have L, M, and N. Let's pick one. Which one would you like to solve for? Let's say angle L. Seems how nobody's here to ask for it. So you know that angle L, that's going to go out here. So I have cos of L and I have L squared. So start with that and then the rest of it's easy, right? So I do M squared plus N squared minus 2MN cos of L. Now I'm trying to solve for this angle. So I want to rearrange this equation so that I have cos of L on one side. The best way to do this is to move this whole part here to the other side of the equation because that's going to make it positive, right? So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to say 2mn cos L equals and now I have m squared plus n squared, and I'm going to bring this l squared over here, and I brought this over here, right? So minus l squared, and then I just divide by 2mn. So now I have m squared plus n squared minus l squared over 2mn. And now all you have to do is plug in the side lengths. So m is 10, n is 8, l is 12, and I'm dividing by 2 times m, n, so 2 times 10 times 8. And if you do that on your calculator, you're going to have 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 12 squared equals 20. And I'm going to divide that by, this is 80, 160, right? That's my ratio. If I want angle L, I'm going to do second cos, second answer, and I get approximately 82.8 degrees. Okay, so once you have this now, 82.8 degrees and I'm not going to finish this one entirely because we're going to do some on in the next side here. So now you can see that you can use the sine law. Again, you only need the cosine line once because look, now I have this and I have, if I want to find angle N now, if I want to find angle N, I would do this and this side length and there you go. Once I found this angle using the sine law, the third angle, I'm going to add these two together and subtract them from 180. And there you go. So you use the cosine law once, then sine law, then sine law, 
and then finally then 180 degrees minus the two angles so that was L plus N right and that's how you would solve so I'm going to do I have four little questions on the next page we're going to look at them there um, the question is should you be using the sine law the cosine law or um, how are you going to solve these so you have to solve the triangles so hopefully I have enough room to do all these because there's lots of math going on here again okay so solve these triangles side 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 I have all three sides can I use the sine law no if I use sine law I needed one of the angles I don't have any angles so I'm going to do just like I did in the last question so again pick an angle that you want to solve for let's solve for angle R so that means that R squared is going to be equal to something something cos of R right so this is going to be a little r, this is going to be a little t, remember they're opposite, and s. So r squared equals, now I just use the other two, s squared plus t squared minus 2 times s times t times the cos of r. Now remember we're going to rearrange the equation, so I'm going to put 2st cos r, so I'm bringing this negative, all this part here, to the other side of the equation, and then I leave s squared plus t squared minus r squared, and finally I'm going to divide by 2st. Lots of writing here. Okay, so I forgot the s again, cos r. Okay, plug in everything. s is 17. 17 squared, t is 23, I squared, I subtract r squared, and then divide by 2 times s times t. Remember, that's going to give me a ratio. So let's plug all this in. So I have 17 squared plus 23 squared minus 19 squared, whoops, I put to the negative 1, squared equals 457 and I'm going to divide by 2 uh, divide by 17 divide by 23 I'm doing it all in different parts okay so now I have this I want the cos want to find the shift cos so cos negative 1 of that answer gives me 50 let's run to the nearest degree so 54 degrees approximately 54 degrees Okay, so that's R. We'll put that up here in a different color. So we have 54 degrees up here now. So now I'm going to use the sine law. Remember, you only need to use that once. Okay, so this is step one. Step two is going to be sine law. So I'm going to make my X's here. So I have this angle and this side. And let's solve for t. So I have 23 and t. So I have one unknown, three things I know. Right? I have three things I know. So I'm going to say the sine of t over 23 equals the sine of r, which is 54 over 19. So now use your little n, sine t, boom, boom, boom. So sine t, that's capital T, equals 23 sine 54 degrees divided by 19. So 23 times sine of 54 divided by 19 gives me 0 0.97933. And I want second sine, see how that gives me to the negative one, and then I ask for the answer, get equals, and I get 78 degrees. So approximately 78 degrees. So I have three sides, I have two angles, and part three, so angle, uh, what do we have last, S, angle S. Angle S is equal to 180 degrees minus 74, oh, 78 plus 54. I knew there was a 4 in there. And there are degrees. So let's do 180 minus 78 
minus 54, that gives me 48 degrees. Angle, this is an angle, S equals 54 degrees. And there you go, you've solved the triangle. Yay, how easy. Okay, let's look at question B. Now, if you were to solve this triangle, remember solving a triangle means find all side lengths, all angles. So right now, I don't have two sides with a contained angle, so I don't need the cosine law because look, I've got this and I can find angle W by using this. So this is an easy one. I'm going to use sine law. So the sine of W over 4 equals the sine of 72 degrees over 5. So sine W equals 4 times this divided by that. Sine W equals 4 times the sine of 72 degrees divided by 5. So 4 times the sine of 72 degrees, and then we're dividing by 5. Okay, so that's my ratio. Second sine, second answer equals 49.5, so about 50 degrees. Usually they ask to the nearest degree, 50 degrees. Okay, so I've got 50 here. Now I can figure out what this angle is right away. Angle Y equals 180 degrees minus 50 plus 72. That's 122, so that's going to give me, what, 58. Okay. Just double checking because sometimes I make mistakes. Okay, so this is 58 degrees now. And I still have this side length, so I can use the sine law again. So this was sine law, then I use some of the angles, and the third step to solve this, I'm going to use um, this, and we'll call this side y. So sine of 58 degrees over side length y. And I'm going to use this one that I already had. I always suggest that to my students. Use the, the part you were already given. Okay, so y equals, boom, boom, boom. y equals the sine of 58 degrees times 5 divided by the sine of 72 degrees. Now that's going to give me a measurement so I don't have to do any shifting. So sine 58 times 5 divided by the sine of 72 gives me about 4.5. 4 4.5 meters. Okay, so that's how you solve triangles. Okay, so I don't think I need to go through all of these with you, but let's take a look at what should you use to solve this triangle. So for this triangle here, I Check, there's no right angles. Can I use the sine law? I have an angle, but I don't have this side length. But I have two sides with a contained angle. So this means cosine law. So first step is going to be cosine law to find side length B. That's this side here. Right, so once I found B, then the next step I'm going to do is step two, I'm going to use sine law to find, now you get a choice, because once I have this, I can either solve for angle C or I can solve for angle A, because I have this or this one, right? To find angle A or angle C, and the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, 180 degrees minus the sum of angle B plus angle, let's say we found A. And that's how you'd solve that one. Okay, and the last one here, the question is, what law do you need to use here? So you have 80, you have 45, and you have 15. 
You have 15, but I don't have this angle here, right? How do I find that angle? Well, in this case, I already have two measures. So the third measure, angle D right away, is going to be 180 degrees minus 80 plus 45. 80 and 45 is 125. Um, 125, so that's 55 degrees. Okay, so once you have that one, 55 degrees, with all your angles, then you can use the sine law to find the other sides. Okay, you have to use sine law twice. Now, sine law two times to find other sides. Okay, so it's important that you know like where to start, right? And if you can see the X pattern, like I said, you know right away it's sine law. Um, sometimes you have to find the cosine, use cosine law first to find another side or angle, usually side, right? Okay, so that's, uh, that's a lesson on cosine law. And just before I go, I'm going to show you something a little personal of mine. This is my acute notebook that I was given for my birthday from one of my daughters. And I thought it would be a cute way to end the lesson. So I hope you've subscribed. Like the videos by liking and subscribing. It gives more people um, access to the channel because they will see it show up better with the wonderful algorithm that Google has. So the more people that see the channel, the more people I can help out and the happier we all will be and smarter. Bye for now.